someone another situation like if someone came up to you and was like what's what is esoteric christianity because that's a foreign concept um how would you even go about trying to describe that to somebody um <laughs> i don't know because i this may be the first time that somebody has ever asked me what <laughs> esoteric christianity is uh <clears throat> But let's try it. Let's let's see if I could answer this question. Um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> there's obviously um, many different sects of Christianity. Um, there's a whole whole bunch, right? There's um, the Anglican Church. Uh, you know the various branches of Protestantism. There's the Catholic. There's the large O Orthodox. <clears throat> Lots of uh, and then it just gets into um, all sorts of hairy places with, you know, charismatics, Pentecostals and things like that. Um, <clears throat> and look, I I respect all religious beliefs. I, I sincerely do. Um, but they, they rely too much on, for me, on the interpretation that quote unquote church fathers and doctors of the church have now <clears throat> if you want to talk about um uh it's just it becomes difficult for me to uh, i'll put it this way i i really appreciate christianity but i don't really care about churchianity and uh, a, a lot of people that are involved in the church say, well, well, the church is inseparable. You only get Christianity through the church. And I, I, I don't believe that that's true. Um, <clears throat> I don't necessarily subscribe uh, to one group of core canonical gospels or, or um, textual interpretations of this kind of uh, Christ event or Christ consciousness sort of coming into the world. Um, and I don't, and this is where my heresy is. I don't care whether or not Christ was real. It doesn't matter to me. It so doesn't, it, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, I believe in the message. I believe that that power exists, that essence, that Christic force um, that is initiatory and and is the heart of the universe. Um, <clears throat> uh, so <clears throat> if Christ was fully man and fully God, that's pretty awesome. Uh, and if this is all just a potent analogy for a spiritual blueprint for how to become self-actualized and spiritually potent, um, then that's just as great too, right? <laughs> And esoteric Christianity, I think it's not really that it got kind of screwed up with the whole Dan, Dan Brown thing where people think it's like we're looking for Jesus's family or something like that. It's it's um it's much more taking the idea or the model of Christ and applying that in your own behavior um, and saying that, well, <clears throat> The, there are aspects of of this Christic theology here that um, I can experience rather than just having to go to church and do this rote formula for and somebody kind of pats me on the head and says, OK, Jesus loves you now. Um, <clears throat> there are, you know, I guess teetering on this the verge of using the word gnosis, really, you know, an actual experiential knowledge of things like the holy spirit mm. you know of things like the saints of of the church and <clears throat> of things like uh <clears throat> transubstantiation right this alchemical sort of operation where we're we're turning something it's it's of one substance with with god and with christ and in the same way that an alchemist right <laughs> praise to god as opposed to a chemist, he prays for the intercession of the divine in his work 
and then in the end is producing this spagyric, this quintessence, which he takes into his body. It's the same thing with the Eucharist. Um, <clears throat> it's just that, you know, in, in different denominations, they just say only our priests can do this. It's only accomplished through these select few who follow all our rules. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I'm not sure that that's what esoteric Christianity is to other people. But for me, it's about taking the because we can go really, really deep. I mean, this goes into Neoplatonism. I mean, this, we, you know, it goes back to really, it goes back to Plato, you know, everything does. But in the 10th book of the Republic, he has this tale that he relates, and it's called the myth of Ur. Now, I did a whole episode on Plato, but I left this out because it it has to be its own episode. That's how important it is. But um, it's called the, the Myth of Ur, and essentially it, he's retelling a tale of this near-death experience that this man named Ur had where he transcended his physical body and got a glimpse through the curtain to the other side. And Plato retells this whole story about how you're just this kind of undifferentiated soul um, in this realm outside of the eighth sphere, you know, the Ogdoad, the fixed sphere of the stars. You <clears throat> and you are brought down, you you reincarnate, right? I think they called it metempsychosis. You reincarnate, you transmigrate from one realm to the other, and you're led by what they call the daemon. Mm -hmm. And the that word was eventually changed into the word demon but mm -hmm. uh, uh, essentially you know this agatho agatho diamond was the guide of good counsel it was your spiritual guide took you but took your soul by the hand or whatever you know whatever part of your anatomy that your soul has and pulled you down into the earth into the physical body and as you passed through these spheres as you passed through the heavenly spheres, you know, the Jupiterian sphere, the Saturnian sphere, the, you know, the mercurial sphere, you, your, your psyche, right? Psyche meant soul in, in Greek. Your, your, your psyche, your psyche absorbed the, the, the characteristics of these spheres, you know, so your communicative would be um, intellectual <clears throat> clever side that would be the positive sides of the mercurial sphere if you're a liar if you're a thief if you're a cheater if you're very covetous those are the negative aspects of that sphere so the diamond pulls you down plants you in your body and on the way down you absorb these different you know i guess to, to, to use an analogy you absorb the colors of the spheres and that plants you there so now in early Christianity, right? Because there was no one, there was no one universal form of Christianity. In the beginning, it was all these different schools of thought competing for space with each other, you know, one of them being the Gnostics. <clears throat> so at, at that time, right, you have guys like early church father, even to the Catholics, Origen, early church father, Tertullian, uh, Pseudo Dionysus, the, the Areopagite. You have all these early church fathers, these people who influenced the church as it stands today. And they were all Neoplatonists. They were all taught by Neoplatonist teachers. I mean, Origen, I believe, was a student of Ammonius Saccas, which is he he taught Plotinus, the first Neoplatonist. Like these people got all their philosophy from the same teachers. And this kind of conception of the spheres, 